Hey guys, this is Caspi with Tape, and today you join me for episode 11 of Caspi Road to Exploration, and we start with the buzzard something probe. Uh, the probe that is headed for Drez to go and land, because last time we sort of screwed up and flew right past Drez. But this time, we will not fail. We shall succeed in getting into orbit and landing on Drez, the pointlessest planet in the system. Yes, it should be demoted to a dwarf planet because I hate it. Not because it is small, but because Drez is dumb. No, Drez is a good planet. People just don't go to it because it's kind of boring, you know? It's kind of like the moon. It's a lot like Ike. I'm pretty sure we faked the Drez landings too. I mean, I know I said we faked the Ike landings just by landing on the moon because they look the same, but I'm pretty sure the Drez landings are faked as well. But this one, <laughs> I don't know what I'm talking about. It's pretty early in the episode for me to be crazy. But <laughs> still, anyway, yes, this probe uh, just needs to make a few tweaks so that it will arrive in about a year. Orbit and land. This is not using any nuclear engines because it was much cheaper not to use nuclear engines because nuclear engines are, are expensive and these are fairly cheap. Um, I screwed up a little bit there by overburning, but with a little tweak to the thrust limiter, we get into a nice position and a bit of a burn south, and we will be arriving at Drez after another burn <laughs> retrograde. Yeah, tweaking takes a while, but yeah, just another one of my many, many probes heading out into the system. And talking of my many, many probes heading out into the system, this is the Athena-1, our ion-powered space probe, headed for Moho. It's burned out its liquid fuel and oxidizer stage doing its uh, inclination change and now it will fire up its ion engine to do a very long slow burn. But I quite like ion engines even though they're slow. I like them. They're just kind of relaxing and it makes me feel like I've achieved something at the end of the burn. Um, I won't make you watch all of it because it took about half an hour. Obviously I sped up time and just went and ate some food and stuff. But I came back and it was completing its burn. Finishing it off using these solar panels, not too big because they're pretty close to the sun now. We're heading down to Moho right near the sun, so we can use fairly small solar panels. Um, and yes, that will arrive this episode, but not right now because, again, we have many more things to do. I'm heading over to Duna now. Yes, we're jumping all around the Kerbal system, jumping from spacecraft to spacecraft because we have a very busy space program. And here we are with the Concordia, accidentally firing up all of the engines which don't need to be fire fired up. We just need to fire up the nuclear engines so that we can head up to the Duna resource store because it's almost time to go home. We left the surface of Duna last time and now we're going to fuel up. Well, not well. we're going to put a little fuel in the spacecraft, but mostly life support and leave one of these landers behind um, so that we can get back to Kerbin with enough food and enough fuel. We do have enough fuel to go back to Kerbin right now, especially if we leave one of the landers behind, but it would be nice to have a little more so that we can get into a better orbit and also um, so that also have enough life support that everyone doesn't die because that would be a bit of a downer, <laughs> downer ending really. So yeah, we do a little bit of a tweak. We uh, do some things and then we'll just do a quick little burn in a few orbits here. You can see that's pretty close. We're actually going to go one more because then we can burn prograde and then we'll meet the uh, spacecraft. Um, we do a little bit of orbiting, but blah, 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 we do the burn. Um, yeah, pretty big spacecraft to dock, especially given that it doesn't have any dedicated RCS systems. It will just be using the RCS systems on the landers, and it does have some on the habitation, actually. That's not quite correct. It does have some dedicated RCS on the uh, habitation things that stick out. Um, so yeah, it shouldn't have too much trouble. It will just be the biggest thing I've ever... D no, it, no, I built a one kilometer space station. What am I talking about? But maybe the more, most complex um, thing I've ever docked because it's actually like a big spaceship. Maybe one of the cooler ones. And to a station, which is pretty much just a beam filled with fuel and things. Um, yeah, so here we are getting close. Getting ready to uh, arrive at the station. Spend a little time where none of the Kerbals have spent much time. Have a look at the station. There's nowhere really to stay in the station unless you cram yourself into a fuel tank, which you probably don't want to do because it's probably full of fuel. And fuel's really cold and it'll, it'll freeze your freaking face off. So yes, now we're backing into the station about four kilometers away, but it's already glowing with the, uh, with the little flicker of um, distant object enhancement, which lights things up. It's why you can see so many planets in the sky in my, uh, in, my, in my game. Anyway, we come in pretty close and we start slowing down, using the engines as much as possible because the RCS won't provide a ton of thrust for, um, for a spacecraft that's so big. Well, it will provide the same amount of thrust, it just won't provide uh, 
particularly high thrust to weight ratio on a spacecraft so big is what I meant. So yes, this will indeed be heading back to uh, Kerbin, but it won't get back in time to meet the next Duna window, so we're going to have to build another one. I'm not going to build the exact same thing, because although I do love reusing vehicles, it would be a bit boring if I built my next transport vehicle to be the exact same. Also, our technology's come on a long way, and I want a bigger thing. Um, the next mission that the Concordia will probably do probably won't be a Duna mission. It's actually probably going to head to EVE to... Um, well, actually, I was going to say just to orbit and maybe explore Gilly a bit, but it also probably will, there probably will be a lander, because if you remember last episode, I, um, my, um, my test lander arrived at EVE, which is going to try and land and get off of EVE, so that we can lay some groundworks for future missions. So, yeah, that might be a possibility. Um, that probe will be landing probably in the next couple of episodes. It's got to wait a while so that Kerbin comes into view of where, of my landing site. It's a little bit annoying, um, but yeah. Anyway, we've just tucked away some radiators on the station so that we can move in without breaking anything. It doesn't really need radiators, but it looks cool. Um, yeah, just this big old thing. Still has the um, uh, transfer stage attached, actually, just in case I do want to move it, which I may want to move this station in, uh, in future. I don't know why I put it in such a high orbit. I think it was actually just necessitous, really, because it came in at a weird angle. Oh, look at Duna blowers. God, I love Scatterer. Scatterer makes Duna look so good. But in fairness, even without Scatterer, Duna looks goddamn beautiful. Anyway, we get ourselves docked, a little bit of shaking um, and a little bit of finagling to actually get the docking to happen, but there we go. So, first order of business, we need to leave one of these landers here. We put Jeb in so that he can move it across, and I do one of my typically very slow dockings, because I'm just enjoying Duna at this point. I don't know if I say this a lot, but I really, really like how pretty Kerbal Space Program is. And yes, I do know that I say that all the time. But anyway, I will spare you the uh, boring slowness of my uh, dockings and just show you the actual docking. Um, so yeah, there we get in. We're going to leave this here for future missions so we have to bring less hardware next time. And so we have to haul less hardware back to Kerbin, which we just don't need. Um, we're going to put uh, Jeb back in the spacecraft at some point. Why don't I undock? Oh, yeah. Okay, I was undocking um, so that I could quick load and see how much Delta V I have. I do that sometimes, just it's easier than docking and redocking. It's just much easier. So we're going to put a bit of fuel in here, just a little bit of some of the spare fuel from the station, because there is quite a bit of fuel on the station, but we want to keep some for a future mission. Um, we're also going to do life support, but I think I forgot to do this, but we'll do that next episode. And we'll probably be heading back next episode. But anyway, that uh, will be all next episode. Let's focus on this one. And the probe has arrived at Moho. It's uh, firing up its little ion engines, getting ready to uh, get into orbit. We're firing up the engines obviously very early because we've got a two kilometers of uh, two kilometers of delta v, two kilometers per second of delta v to burn off, is what I meant to say. Um, and that will take a little while with this tiny little engine providing two kilonewtons of thrust. Although for an ion engine, two kilonewtons is pretty intense. If we had that in real life, we'd be happy as hell. I mean, the I think the idea for uh, Putting an asteroid in orbit of the moon requires um, a bunch of ion engines, which I may be entirely wrong about this, but provides something like 12, kil 12 newtons of thrust. And that's all of them, because, yeah, ion engines aren't very powerful right now. Anyway, the burn does take a while, as I said, and again, I will spare you it, because uh, I was sitting here a while just, just watching it like, ah, oh, God, and you have to kind of micromanage so that your periapsis doesn't go too low. So I couldn't just sit here, I had to... Sit there, well, well, no, I meant I, I couldn't go away and do something, I had to sit here. Anyway, annoyingly, we briefly lose connection, which means I'm going to be uh, a little late on the circularization burn, which means I'm going to be missing a bit of delta V, and also my orbit's going to be kind of skew off, which is super annoying, but, um, yeah, I mean, it's fine. Uh, it, it'll be fine, but, it, yeah. So we're going to go right over our periapsis and hopefully still get into orbit. Luckily, we have a ton of Delta V. This is the spacecraft that has arrived at Moho with the most excess Delta V um, compared to other spacecraft because actually it was pretty lucrative. We had a pretty intense plane change burn, but the uh, orbital insertion burn was only two kilometers. Sometimes it can be up to four kilometers to slow down around uh, Moho, and you have to actually start burning before you enter Moho's sphere of influence. But luckily not this time, we will have much Delta V to complete a mission we've had for a very long time to go and take some temperature reports of MOHO, which you can see right there. And um, they're very lucrative, this mission. Um, so yeah, anyway, we're going to make our orbit a little better, bring our peri uh, apoapsis down so this doesn't take too long, because I've been skipping through a lot of time in this episode to get, make probes go places, because there's not that much going on right now, but I'd rather not waste time. So anyway, we need to do a quick uh, prograde burn, and we'll probably need to do a bit of a uh, plane change, because the... 
Uh, reports need to be taken slightly kind of off the equator, which is a little annoying. So we're going to do that now. Um, although I think that was the wrong way around. So we'll flip around and we'll start burning this way. Tweak it just so that we hopefully will pass in um, in front of those into those zones where we can take the temperature. And yeah, and then plan a little burn down there. Shouldn't take too long. I'm going to bring the periapsis down because annoyingly those uh, those temperature reports have to be taken below 11 kilometers, which is really annoying because <laughs> it takes a while and you need a lot of delta V to get into a good orbit of Moho. And we did have a probe that was attempting to do those missions, but it burned off all its fuel doing a different mission, which was basically the same. It was just a different one. So yeah, these have been a long time coming. Anyway, uh, we're going to go around now, slow down, get into a good orbit. Um, however, we do lose connection very briefly just before the burn, which puts us in a slightly worse position, but we'll still be able to get into a low orbit, which is fine to take those freaking reports, which have been there a while. Um, mopping up old missions, because yeah, well, we've got m much more important things to do than little probe missions uh, nowadays. We've got places to go. But anyway, we're getting to a good orbit. Um, get into a nice one. I spare you the long burn. wasn't that long, but it's a long episode. But anyway, yeah. Annoyingly, though, we are going to be a little too inclined to get those uh, reports on this pass. You can see that, well, you can't see right now, but you will be able to see that the orbit comes in a little too high. The other annoying thing is when I take a temperature, uh, when I take a temperature report, which is what I'm going to do here, there's a 50 second delay because I'm at uh, MOHO, which is 50 seconds to send a signal to Kerbin. Um, so that you can see that I'm putting down these, well, trying to put down maneuvers so I can time it properly. Now, in stock communications, this doesn't happen. You just get things instantly. But this is remote tech, goddammit. This isn't even 1.2. We don't have stock commu communications. So, yes, I have to deal with a communication delay, which is a little annoying. But anyway, we fly right over the zones anyway, which is, you know, for, well, doesn't really matter because I clicked the wrong button anyway. It just turned on the sensor. Anyway, after another orbit, um, which I skipped through because it was very slow, I couldn't time warp very much because I'm very low down. We do a bit of a plane change, as you can see, flying close to the surface, looking rather beautiful. Set up the maneuvers so that I can take both of these in one pass um, by clicking the button about 12 seconds apart and then waiting and hoping, um, which is quite a fun little thing to do, actually, learn about how to, you know, time things properly. But luckily, that doesn't actually expand to control, so when I, like, hit pitch or your, it does it in real time, which is really nice, otherwise I would be very upset all the time. Anyway, we come into the zone now, um, hoping that that temperature report will be taken at the right time, which it is, which is good, and the second one will follow it 12 seconds later. We've entered the zone, and the report, yeah, I'm, I'm too, I'm too early, the report gets, the report gets taken, the, there we go, the report gets taken. And we carry on. We get the money, 200 grand, 60 grand, just a lot of money. Very much worth this little probe. And that is finally over. Our exploration of Moho with probes is pretty much done, I think. Maybe we'll send some Kerbals down there sometime, but yeah. Anyway, back at Kerbin, we have other troubles. We didn't really get enough fuel last time. Well, actually, we got enough oxidizer last time from our mining operations on Minmus. Um, but not enough liquid fuel, because I brought too much oxidizer, which meant I had to burn a bunch of the liquid fuel, uh, which was really annoying. But anyway, we're going to get ourselves a, a maneuver plan so that we can head out to Minmus, mine some more fuel, and bring it back. Because we still have things to do around Kerb, and we have a moon to explore. We actually have a moon base I haven't used in a while. And we have uh, many things to do on Minmus, such as mining fuel. And also, I've got to build the rest of that station. I keep forgetting, but uh, <laughs> there's a station around Minmus I started but never completed. Well, it was only a few episodes ago, but I haven't really paid it any attention is what I'm trying to say, and we need to do that. But for now, we'll just worry about fetching fuel from the surface and bringing it back. So, yes, we'll fire up the engines, get on to uh, Minmus, and, uh, well, land and hopefully start fueling. So yes, we fire up the nuclear engines. It's a little bit of a nippier burn this time because I'm much lighter on fuel. I just have the outer tanks filled up, which is really good because, um, well, last time it took a very long time with that bottom tank filled up, which I don't really need to fill. Um, on the way back, yes, I do, but on the way there, I really don't. So yeah, anyway, just expanding that orbit out so that we go and meet Minmus. We'll have to do a bit of a plane change. You saw me earlier finagling trying to get an encounter with Minmus. I always find Minmus surprisingly hard to encounter. I don't really know why. Um, but it just, I guess it's quite inclined, and it's quite small, so, yeah, it's kind of annoying. But, uh, yeah, we do a little bit of tweaking, um, so that we get nice and close to the surface of Minmus, so we can take maximum use out of the Oberth effect, spending as little fuel as possible. You can see I'm having a little trouble with these maneuver nodes, actually. They're, uh, 
kind of hard to do from the view of Minmus, so I get as close as possible and then just sort of burn whatever and I'll fix it later because that's how NASA does it. Just, uh, I don't know man, do whatever, we'll fix it later. <laughs> That'd be good to have that kind of fuel budget, wouldn't it? Um, kind of future space stuff, I guess, like Expanse style vehicles. Oh, the Expanse is so good. That TV show about people who still live here but they have really good spacecraft and they can like travel fairly fast but not like warp drive. Good show. Anyway, um, oh, I'm waiting for season two of that to come to Netflix. Oh, it, why isn't it on Netflix? It's apparently a Netflix original series, but it's actually produced by the Sci-Fi Channel? I don't know, man. What the fuck is going on? Anyway, enough talking about The Expanse. Let's get into Orbit of Minmus, the, uh, the little blue, the little blue, uh, well, I guess it's more green. Yeah, I don't know why I'm saying blue. The little green dot in the expanse of space. Uh, I said expanse again. Yes. <laughs> Uh, anyway, there we go, nice orbit, fairly simple, much easier than getting into orbit of Moho, I must say. And then we've just got to go meet the uh, meet the lander on the surface. We'll have to do a bit of time warping because it's in the dark, um, so we'll target that, warp around a couple of times, uh, and probably another time actually, because it's kind of still in the dark there. It's in a little, looks like it's kind of in a crater, although it's not, it's near a crater, I know where it is, I landed it, god damn it. Anyway, but yes, now it looks fully in the sun and we can start deorbiting and trying to land close to it. Have to land very close to it because we've got to connect to it with a pipe, which is a fairly short, has a fairly short limit in Kerbal Attachment System, which is, uh, yeah, somewhat annoying. But anyway, we're uh, going to just get on, get on track and go land. Um, yeah, I'm pretty happy with how this Minmus kind of mining operation is going. It's only done one mission, but it was effective enough and I screwed up a bunch in that one and it still worked, so... Yeah, pretty good. I thought it would be much harder than just bringing fuel up on rockets. And it is, you know, a little more work <laughs> to get some fuel up. But it brings more fuel to the station than the rockets did, so it probably works out to not that much more work actually flying the rockets. And it is cheaper, and that's the main thing. We've got to keep cost on this space program down because we've got a lot of big vehicles to build. I mean, we've got to go back to Duna on a new vehicle. We're going to have to get the Concordia prepared for a mission to EVE, which will require sending a big lander that can take off again. Um, and yeah, I mean, I'm also very interested in Jewel. We have some probes getting there. Um, I only ever got one probe into Jewel, uh, into orbit of Jewel in Road to Exploration because I kept not putting enough solar panels on there. Um, but this time I send it with RTGs, so victory. But anyway, we land really nice and close and slowly to the lander, to the miner even, and there we go. I'll start, um, fueling that up next episode because right now I'm just going to send off this lander, this little moon exploration vehicle, it's going to fuel up on the fuel we got last time from the from the Minmus mining operation. And we're going to send it onto the moon. Because we have a mission we only half completed a few episodes ago. And I've kind of been putting it off because it involves a lot of jumping around. But yeah, I didn't take quite enough fuel last time and we didn't complete all of the missions. So that's going to go back um, with a few kerbals, do a little bit of science. Um, because yeah, we've still got science stuff to do. Um, got to make a little money, make a little get a little science, it'll be great. Um... So yeah, that's going to fuel up and go. This is, of course, the Thor 1 lander, which is the quite an old one now. I mean, it's the second generation uh, exploration lander we made, because there was also the Red Origin. I don't know. Watch Ex Road to Exploration if you want to know all this stuff. i got to explain everything. <laughs> but, you know, I try and, you know, allow for some of these things. So I know some people will have joined after Road to Exploration and will be like, what are you talking about? But that was the prequel series to this. Well, no, it wasn't a prequel. This was the sequel to that, which is basically just a deeper exploration. Well, kind of more focused on colonization, because Road to Exploration, we didn't go that many places. Um, but you know, we sent a lot of probes places, but, you know, we didn't send Kerbals that many places except to Duna eventually. But this series, obviously, right now is still doing a lot of stuff on Kerbin, but we've got a lot of exploration to do, a lot of... Heading out to Jewel. Um, our probe hopefully will be getting there soon, which has its uh, RTG, so it won't run out of power. That's again a remote tech thing. Things run out of power because um, communication dishes take up a lot of electricity, which is, yeah, kind of annoying. But anyway, it looks like we're going to get ourselves a nice encounter with, uh, with the moon, and we'll go and complete that mission next episode because this is the end of the episode. I hope you have enjoyed it. Next episode, we'll probably be coming back from Duna. We'll be doing lots of things and maybe, probably not landing on Eve. That'll probably be the episode after because we've got to wait. We've got to wait a while. 
until everything's in the right position. But anyway, if you want to go check out a couple more videos, there's a video I did on Sunday, which was a subscriber designs video in which we have a fighter jet showdown. Lots of fighters fight each other, and there's some beautifully cinematic dogfights. It's really, really cool. And there's also my most recent episode of Prison Architect, in which we build Dave America a house, because I love him. There's also links to my Twitter, Twitch, and Patreon in the description if you're interested. But as always, I hope you've enjoyed this. This has been KSP with Tate. I'll see you next time.